Hi, uh, my name's Joan Middleton. I write a blog called Slummy Single Mummy. I'm here today at Angel Square in Manchester to talk to David Collingwood of Cooperative Funeral Care about funerals. Hello, David. Hi, Joe. Now, the Cooperative Funeral Care um, have a, a system of a prepaid funeral planning. Is that right? Could you just tell me a little bit about what that means and what the benefits are? Sure, yeah. Um, a prepaid funeral is really a funeral where you've talked about the funeral, you've planned it in some way before, agreed the overall cost at the current um, prices and you've paid that money then to us as the supplier of that funeral and then we guarantee that no matter how long the funeral takes uh, in the future we will conduct that funeral at no additional cost. I made my will recently and one of the questions I was asked was did I have a preference whether I was buried or cremated and my first thought was no, I don't really mind, because I thought, well, that makes it easier for the people planning. They can choose whatever they want. But actually, the opposite is true, isn't it? It, it really is. It's just to, to be able to give somebody an indication, they know what you would want. And, you know, that, that always is the classic, What you know, what would that be? Would that be burial or cremation? But the funeral is it's far more than just the disposal, as it were, of the remains. Yeah. It's around the service. It's around everything, you know, before the burial and cremation as well. So what are those kind of key choices that people have to think about when they're planning a funeral? Well the key thing uh, certainly with funeral funerals and funeral planning is, is having something that's right for you that means something to you because we're all unique people we lead unique lives and it's really important that the funeral's a unique thing as well um, so it's really about first of all the service would it be would there be some form of religious service or would it be a non-religious service so no mention of religion or God at all um, the type of, of service as well would you want family and friends to get involved in perhaps readings and that sort of thing what sort of music would you want you know, what's your favourite sort of choices? Even the vehicle, the hearse for the funeral, what type of hearse would you want? There are all sorts of choices out there. Coffins, there are many different types of coffins, flowers. There's all sorts of things that you can think about, um, stationery, and even online memorials. We have online memorials now that we, we provide people with where they can um, um, put uh, messages, videos, all sorts of things online, and people can read that, uh, even directions for the funeral as well. I went to meet with my local funeral director director in Taunton recently and he was saying even that the hearses now that they use in that area are silver rather than black and I guess it's little things like that isn't it we're gradually moving away from death and funerals being really kind of somber and being more of a celebration I, I think so and I think it, it's around making sure that things are done respectfully but things are done you know differently where, where it's appropriate and in, in that area the guys do have a silver fleet it's very different it's very distinct but it's very unique as well and, and again it moves people away from the somber sort of black uh, uh, nature of funerals and into something where you don't it doesn't need to be that way and there are a number of funeral directors it's not unique to the cooperative funeral care that way you know different colors of vehicles are actually being uh, being yeah. chosen and, but also th there, there are different types of vehicles available. You think about a conventional hearse, whatever colour it, it might be. Well, there are also all sorts of choices. You know, you can have a horse-drawn hearse. Um, you can have, we even have a Land Rover hearse, which is a converted Land Rover uh, 110 station wagon. And that's for Land Rover lovers. They, you know, they can, they can go to their final resting place uh, in a Land yeah. Rover. I was shown when I went for the visit, actually, um, a picture of, it's like a motorbike with the hearse in a sidecar. Yeah. I thought that looked... Cool. And again, really out for people where, where uh, biking is a really important part yeah. of their life, you know, that's how they live their life. And, and, and so actually to, to have your final, um, uh, you know, journey, as it were, to be appropriate in that way, I think it's fantastic. And it, those uh, motorcycle funerals are really impressive to see as yeah, well. The noise yeah. and the atmosphere is absolutely fantastic. I've only ever been on a motorbike once and I quite wanted to do that. Yeah. I thought it looked really fun. So Mark at the funeral directors in Taunton was showing me things like... Um, paperweights that you can have ashes put into. He said you can have ashes put into fireworks and all kinds of things. I guess most people wouldn't even know that those were options. It, it, absolutely, and I think it's around making sure that we're able to present choices to people and encourage them to think about what, what do they want. Years gone by, I've been a funeral director all my life, and I remember when I first started, the number of people who just simply had um, the ashes after the cremation scattered mm -hmm. in the Garden of Remembrance at the crematorium. There was mm -hmm. no sort of thought. And gradually through the years, we thought, well, what else could we do with them so they could be scattered in a particular spot? You know, favourite walk, favourite view. Um, ashes can be interred if, if there's a family plot, something conventional yeah. like that. But there are all sorts of other 
there's um, products out there that can be done so they can be turned into glass, into jewellery, yeah. in paperweights. Um, I mean, they can even be put into a firework <laughs> and, and the firework just let off into the sky and, and you know, people do, do choose that. Um, so the, the, the choice about what to do with those final things, you know, with the cremated remains, so numerous out there. And it's a matter of being able to, to let people know what the options are. No pressure, but let people think about it and choose the right thing for them. I guess one of the big questions that people have is how much is a prepaid funeral? going to cost. Yeah, I mean the cost of any funeral, whether it's at need or whether it's pre-need, is made up of two sort of parts. The funeral director's charge, what we would charge for all of our services, and then it's the things that we pay out on behalf of the client, the third party costs, so the crematorium or the church or the flowers or the obituary, all those sort of things that you'd have to pay if you were going to organise it yourself without yeah. a funeral director. So the two added together give the overall total cost of the funeral. Um, and now in terms of our funeral plans, uh, they're very much based on at need prices as well so there's nothing you know additional to pay um, our funeral plan starts off just over three thousand pounds for both those um, uh, segments added together depending yeah. on the options that you want and the choices that you want within that anything up to sort of four thousand pounds and above now those are for sort of the fixed price um, funerals mm -hmm. um, but you can tailor make your funeral arrangements for funeral planning so you can have absolutely anything that you want and we just give you an idea on the cost at what are today's prices and that's the price you pay. What is it about corporate funeral care do you think that sets it apart that, that makes it a good option for people? We are a cooperative so we don't make money for shareholders the money that the cooperative makes goes in, back into investment in the business or it goes to our members we are a different organisation and I think we're very transparent and we're very honest and open in what we do um, and certainly in terms of the uh, website that we have and, and the funeral planning comparison table that actually shows quite honestly what the differences are to compare with the, the different um, funeral plan providers um, that are out there. Well thank you very much for talking to me David, that's been really fascinating. Thanks Joe. I've enjoyed it.